Okay, let's talk training for a little while. Um, and uh, Zwift have just released a new feature. It's called Flexible Training Plans. It's been a long, long time in the works, this one. Um, it's been just been released and they bill it as a way of allowing you to fit your life around training or your training around life. But anyway, to make those two difficult things work together a little bit more easily. So let's find out a little bit more about it. The best training is the training that you actually do. That's Jordan Rapp and he's right, you know. Right, like if you have this great plan that was going to get you from A to B, but you didn't actually do any of it, that didn't actually help you, right? You can't train by osmosis, unfortunately. And the thing that stops us training is pretty universal. It's called life. So the team at Zwift set out to fix it, asking themselves a question. How do we get people to fit their training around their lives rather than trying to fit their lives around their training? The key to unlock that riddle is flexibility. It's something that's been on Zwift creator John Mayfield's mind for some time. For you know a couple of years, I've sort of been thinking about how this would work. And, and then last year, I started training in a flexible way, basically the way I always do it. But I started taking notes about what I was doing, what days I did each workout, and like how my schedule sort of fits. So in a way, I'm sort of building a training plan that, that I like. John realised that the plan needed input from an athlete, a coach, and a Zwifter. Step forward, Jordan Rapp. Finding Jordan available has really helped. That's like that's a perfect thing to sort of let him run with, right? I sort of told him kind of how it works in my head and then just give it to Jordan, like figure out how it really works in Zwift. You want to do something Zwifty, right? Like that's not, uh, what is it that is, I think, uh, special about Zwift, and more than anything, it's that it's convenient, right? That, so we thought, okay, how do we make a training plan more convenient? The result is Zwift's flexible training plans. So, what exactly is it? I asked Kerry Murphy, who alongside Jordan and programmer Alex Shanks, has been closely involved in its development. You know that thing that Amazon do when they launch a new product? They've got to kind of describe it in 15 words or something ridiculous. So give me the kind of press release for flexible training plans. It's basically, you know, we're trying not to be a coach per se, but we do want to make it so that, you know, we behave kind of like a coach does where the training plan will fit within your life uh, instead of you trying to fit your life around a training plan. Um, and... The biggest part is trying to be there for you whenever you come into Zwift um, and always letting you know, you know, what's next and what you can do today and giving you some options so that, uh, you know, if today you're not totally feeling up for the really hard workout that you have, there's probably a lighter workout that you could try and do instead. Or if you're too busy, then you can always come back tomorrow and do it and not feel like, oh, I've fallen off the wagon and I can't get back. So how much of the thinking does it do for you? Does the program crunch the numbers and make suggestions? Or is there still some working out you need to do yourself? The idea was really, okay, let's assume that for most people, you're going to train kind of three to five days a week. Uh, let's take plans that have about that many workouts. And then let's really try and we're going to rank the workouts according to importance. Like if you only do one workout this week, do this one, you know, you're only going to do two, do these two, right? And we'll always try and give you some structure where if <clears throat> like some days you might only have one workout that would be available to you. And then we just say, do that one. Other times, if you have two, we might say, you know, you should do this one instead of this one. But if this one, like, let's say a common use case, right, is I'm supposed to do hard intervals today and have an easy day tomorrow after my hard intervals. But I had a really long day at work. The right thing to do physiologically is do an easy whatever and then do your hard intervals the next day. And so this just allows you to swap that. And it's not like you couldn't do that before. It's that people felt guilty about doing these things, right? Like they would make the decision and then they would, they would waste time agonizing over the decision and then they'd feel guilty about doing it. Whereas we haven't actually changed any of that. We've just taken away the agony and the guilt. So Zwifters will need to do some thinking for themselves, but the designers hope that the presentation of options, combined with input from users on how they're feeling, will help more people stay on track with their training. You open up Zwift and it pops up and it says, hey, here's your two options. Would you like to do one of these? And you can choose to do one of those, or you can also say like, no, I'm good for today. I can see that I have two more days to do this. Um, so I'm gonna do what I want and then I'll come back to it. 
or I'll get one done today. You know, I'll just knock this out. Um, so that is to help mitigate that feeling of like, oh, I missed something mm. or, you know, I'm way too busy or I'm just drained from work and I can't get this in. Um, you know, so we're always trying to be there to catch you when you come in and help you keep going forward. I think as as the guys will be the first to acknowledge it, it's kind of the first step down what might be quite a long path. This I think we'll, we will see it develop and develop quite um, uh, in, 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 in quite a more detailed and perhaps a slightly smarter and a kind of more intelligent way as, as time goes on. Um, more of a signal of intent than, than the finished thing, I think. Nathan, do you agree? The first thing that came to my mind was virtual coach. Like, yeah. but the level is definitely general as, as to what mm. is coming to, that from what I've seen so far, which yeah. is actually really good for Zwift. There's a lot of people out there who have coaches at a pretty high level that are giving daily, like, here's what you do today, here's what you do today, here's what you do today, that's very involved. Yeah. And I think they already have, they're already paying for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they already have that in their life. Yeah. With this, we'll get everybody else. This is kind of like pulling everybody else in that's not, um, that's beyond, well beyond enthusiast. You know what I mean? The enthusiast or the cyclist who needs something to um, hold them accountable to and keep things in order uh, so, that you, so that it does something that makes sense and um, is advancing you. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great first step, and I think it will catch... The most amount of people it needs to actually. Oh, I mean, it's definitely going to launch as a as a as a mainstream product, and and that, that's what you'd expect for, from from Swift. It is a mainstream product, but and I know you're interested in this, Shane. Uh, I am too, and I'm sure you are too as well, Nathan. Actually, but but you know the role of let's call it. I'm, I'm going to use that phrase, artificial intelligence. It, it, it's probably not quite that actually. It's probably just something that's a bit smarter than this current product but but the the possibility of a virtual coach or the use of artificial or intuitive intelligence in in training with all the data that Swift have got on all the users I mean once you start to think about that Shane yeah your kind of head starts to explode a bit doesn't it really because the possibilities are enormous I say this is step one probably step 16 we'll jump to now, which is sort of the artificial intelligence. Yeah, so there's a yeah, few steps yeah. to get there. When we start thinking about big data, I've had a few chats about this on uh, on my YouTube channel and uh, with a few people. There's so much data out there at the moment that we've uploaded over years and years. And we've got so many people's responses to their training, their heart rate, their uh, their cadence, their the temperature, the time of day they're riding, who they're riding with, what, what part of the world they're riding. Like there is a lot, so much data out there. It needs to be used in a really, really smart way to start telling people, hey, you know, you do best of a of an evening when it's cooler and at this cadence. So maybe, you know, if this is what you're aiming for, this is your optimal training session. So mm. I think we're still a long way off that, but the yeah. data is there and I'm sure people are really looking hard into that. So that'd be very hard to present though to the general Zwifting population who just want to get on and just be pointed in the right direction. But yeah. it'll it'll come, it'll come. It won't, it won't be too far off. Yeah, yeah, and and um, I did I did discuss this with John Mayfield actually when um, when I did an interview with him when I was in Long Beach a few weeks ago now actually, um, and we kind of we went off in all kinds of different directions during the interview. But I did talk to him about this this idea of artificial intelligence, and and it, he confirmed it is something that they're definitely interested in. Here's here's what John said about that. I wouldn't say there's AI in the current training plan, it's, but I do see having deeper analysis coming. As with most features, we sort of launch what's called an MVP or a, a minimum viable product, right? It's like the first version we'd ever want to release to let people try it, give us feedback. So I could see us being a little smarter about maybe detecting when to take a day off, yeah. for example. Yeah. This training plan system currently doesn't do that. Yeah. Um, it's not smart enough to tell if you're like sick, for example, just from the data, but it could be. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting point because we specifically haven't geeked out that much on Zwift because we're trying to make a product for... It's broad. It's, it's broad, but it's also... We're, we don't skimp out on the data. We're, we're still saving out everything that we've recorded. Yeah, I think at some point we might add like a... 
nerd mode or something where you can have the extra screens and geek mode is probably a better phrase for it. Uh, Nathan, a mode in Zwift called geek mode or nerd mode. I like the sound of that, don't you? <laughs> I, I would have that engaged. Yeah, I'd absolutely love it. That would be um, really, really great to have more information. Um, I also get like, I don't know, like a lot more. Um, I could just see some cool stuff to come along with the expression of those things in game. You know what I mean? So, I mean, John had a pretty cool looking original vortex they were going into for workout mode. So Ooh. I could see a lot of that information having cool expressions too yeah, in game yeah. around it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's a, it's a super exciting area and it, 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 it is all going to come down the transfers uh, before too long. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. <laughs>